Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David and this is a Magic Review. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here doing another review for Peter Turner, illusionist, Mark Lemon. That's right, did a big review, 20 minutes, over 20 minutes. Uh, for how to control minds, Kickstarter release from Peter Turner illusionist, Mark Lemon. Uh, did that yesterday. Today, doing mind games. That's right, we're doing mind games over five hours. Over five hours worth of mentalism goodness. I backed the Kickstarter that illusionist did. I got all three of these, okay? Illusionist did not send these to me for free. I paid for them with my own money. Uh, and so happy to do all three of these reviews back to back to back. Um, I went on vacation last week. I know you didn't notice because I still uploaded videos. That's how I roll. But uh, I went on vacation, spent a lot of time at the airport, spent a lot of time on an airplane. And so that's kind of where I was able to consume all of this mentalism goodness. Uh, just put my headphones on while everybody around me was watching, you know, whatever in-flight movie. I had my phone out and I was watching Peter Turner, Mark Lemon, just kicking some serious mentalism booty. Mind Games, Illusionist, Mark Lemon, Peter Turner, what is it? Mind Games is a video download. It has about 20 different principles all around the psychological force. Why? Well, to force someone to think of the thing that you want them to, right? To psychologically force them. That means you don't have, well, there, there are some card forces in here. I really can't say there, there's no card forces, but there are. But a lot of these will just be uh, just suggestions, right? Suggest you are leading them down a path, leading them down a pathway to your force. And there's a ton of them. There's a ton of them. You're going to get them to think of numbers or words or playing cards, locations, anything. And best of all, they'll never be able to backtrack and figure out how you got them to think of that. Plus, I want to say this really does feel like an extension to how to control minds. It really feels like it's a part of the same project. I know that it's a separate download. I know, you know, you can go to Illusionist right now and purchase this for $50. But I would say if you can get this as part of how to control minds, I think it's money well spent because they really do go together. I would say, you know, if, if how to control minds is the main course, Okay, if that's like the meat and potatoes, then mind games is that tall, cold, frosty beer that you need to go along with it. There, or, 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 um, if you got how to read minds, right, which was more aimed at beginners, right, I would say then mind games is a perfect bridge from one to the next. So mind games gets you from how to read minds to how to control minds. I think it's a nice bridge to carry you through because there's no real like target audience with this one. We'll talk more about that. How are the videos? Uh, the videos are filmed like how to control minds. Probably filmed all at the same time, I would say. Still Mark Lemon, Peter Turner, it's done as jam sessions. There's three different videos. Uh, there's, no, there's no tight structure, there's structure. There is structure, there's some organization, but it's not tight. It's very free flowing, there's no script. It's filmed a jam, jam session style. Uh, the location changes. They'll instantly lift out of one area and be in another area because you know they thought of something later. It's very free flowing, very organic thought. Sometimes they're outside, sometimes they're in a studio, sometimes they're in Peter's living room, sometimes they're driving down the road in a car. Um, Peter is obviously of the two, the more robust, more energetic teacher. Mark's uh, more the opposite, more low-key, more soft-spoken. Uh, they pair well together and it's very enjoyable to watch. Video one is one hour and 38 minutes long. One hour, 38 minutes long. Uh, he's gonna talk about the project, why they did it. I'm gonna give a little bit of an intro. Then they're gonna go right into the spider force, which is exactly like how it sounds. Peter will get you or anyone to think of a spider. And it's a very easy force. It is, I love this one. Um, it's done as a memory test. It's done with a list of categories like insects, names, numbers, uh, and you get the spectator to narrow in down on insects and then narrow in down on spiders. Um, it's so good. It is so good. And 
a really great opener to the whole project. It really does teach you what a psychological force is, gets, you, gets your head wrapped around that. He's gonna teach you uh, the peripheral force in this. He's gonna teach you how to mark a billet. Okay, so there's a little bit of billet work in here. So it's not all propolis, right? It's all propolis. Uh, he's gonna talk a lot about equivocate, which is great. And really they carry equivocate through the entire project, but you're gonna get a lot of it here at the bulk. And they spend a lot of time talking about equivocate, and it's almost the theme of the first video. Um, really getting two great minds talking about it. Uh, and then he's gonna close with the apple force. So again, like the spider force, gonna help you create uh, uh, the image of an apple in your spectator's mind. This was borrowed right from Bigger Fish. I think that's how the, the special for Bigger Fish starts. He starts with the apple force. Peter's gonna teach you all the psychological subtleties that go into forcing an apple. Video two is two hours, seven minutes. Two hours, seven minutes. Uh, starts right off with the beach force. So again, gonna get you, instead of thinking of an object, th to think of a location. And Peter frames it as, um, you know, he calls somebody on a phone and just says, where do you think I am? And he has uh, some, some imagery, some wordplay, and then the spectator just says, I think you're at the beach. And he was right. Uh, he's gonna talk about pen reading, which is, was so, so fun to watch. Um, talking about uh, just listening to pen movements and against paper. And so like, if you know, the spectator is gonna write down anything from you know one to 10, like on a deck of cards, like ace through 10, or king, queen, jack, what would you listen for? Like if you knew they were gonna write a court card down, do you think you could tell the difference between a K and a J just by listening to your spectator? Do you think you could tell if they drew a seven or an eight just by listening? And, and it's, it's amazing. Um, do you think you could tell if the spectator was drawing ESP symbols, a plus, or wavy lines? If you could hear the pen, you could tell what they were writing. If you had narrowed down their choices between one or two, you could, right? So he talks about the best kind of paper to get for billets, the best kind of pens to get. Talks about billet peaks in there. So there's a little bit of billet work in there. This is a really good idea of what the second video is all about. There's a lot of billet work in there. Um, talks about a queen of hearts force, which you probably think, well, I already know that one. This is a little bit more in depth than just the standard, just guess that's a queen of hearts, right? He kind of helps you lead to that. And then he talks a little bit, or actually a lot about piggybacking. So let's say you know what the spectator is thinking of. How do you get them to jump from that to another point to another point and take them to a, a whole third point that they didn't even know they were gonna land on and you're able to guess that. That was pretty cool. Um, video three, two hours and four minutes. Two hours and four minutes. Um, and it starts kind of in the middle of something. They're, they're still continuing to talk about card forces right at the beginning of that. And then there's a lot of discussion uh, about two main topics in video three. The first is the one ahead. Which is, a, which is an age old principle, right? Ancient principle. And you might think, I know everything about the one head. You don't. <laughs> and it's great to hear the two of them talk about the one head principle and how to use it. Uh, they're gonna give you another card force, seven of diamonds force, which he does matter of factly, right? Just has the seven of diamonds right on top of the deck, right there. And just forces it to them and this says, here, turn that top card and bam, oh, it's a seven of diamonds. Um, talks about the increment force. So how to, again, force a card but you're kind of leading them down a path to get to that. So there's, it's, it's almost like mentalism equivocate. It, but again, you got a, a card on the table and you guide them through a series of choices and bam, it's the one right there. And then they spend a lot of time uh, in this video talking about predictions and switches. And Pete spends some time even talking about um, good and bad predictions. Like what, what, what a bad prediction means if the spectator backtracks, right? With like, we'll say like a confabulation style trick, right? And, and why, you know, he wouldn't just, he, like he says, he says, I wouldn't get like a prediction tattooed on my arm because that means the spectator didn't have a choice, right? And I want everyone to feel like they had a choice, that this was like in the moment, like that it was real. And I get that. I, I run into that too when I, when I see so many uh, prediction tricks where the prediction is like printed on a card, you know, that it looks so much 
it, it looks so contrived, right? So fake when something like that happens. Whereas if you had just taken a blank billet and written down something and put it on the table and said, you know, I just, I just got a feeling that it was this. Um, they spend a lot of time talking about predictions and switches. That's the project. Um, what's my takeaway? What are the positives? Positives for this. Tons of tips, tons of nuance, tons of variation. Like I said, great companion piece to either how to read minds or how to control minds. I think it works great for both. Over five and a half hours. Wow. Over five and a half hours worth of stuff. So, and I said that, and I said this yesterday when I talked about how to control minds. Peter is so generous. So, so generous with his teaching. He is not interested in just giving you 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there, wham, bam, done, right? He's not looking at the clock and trying to finish as fast as he can. If he's decided to teach you something, he's going to cover everything and leave no stone unturned. Um, plus, there's not really a skill level to this. Uh, I don't think this is targeting beginners. I don't think it's targeting advanced mentalists. I think it's targeting people who want to sit at Peter Turner's feet and listen to him talk, right? I think they're going to cover stuff you already know. Sure, they're going to cover stuff you already know. But they're also going to cover stuff that you're going to learn again a year from now when you watch it for the fourth time, right? I think you're going to constantly learn something from this as you go back to it. You know what it's like? I'll tell you what it's like. So like, um, if you've been lucky enough to go to a magic convention, by the way, I'm going to Magi Fest next year. Next year, I'm going to Magi Fest. If you're going, I will see you there. Um, if you're lucky enough to go to a magic convention, sometimes uh, the session will start, right? People will all go into the building and they'll watch the speaker. Sometimes some people decide to hang out in the lobby because they're in a really good conversation and they don't want to stop it. And there's like this jam session where people are passing around a deck of cards and they're saying, oh, that's interesting. Well, let me offer this. Or what do you think about this? And somebody else chimes in and says, you know what, here's what I've been thinking. Here's what I've been working on. And then somebody else says, oh, you know what, I got a great idea for that. And you're sitting there and you're taking it all in and you're like, this is the greatest moment ever. And you're a part of this wonderful conversation. But at the same time, there's some sadness in your head because you realize, I am never going to remember all of this. Like I sat here, I witnessed this conversation and I can't, I can't record it. I can't go back in time and start taking notes. Like I'm going to do my best to remember everything that was said, but there's no way I'll ever be able to. This project is like that, except you've got it on video and you can go back and listen to it whenever. And you're going to get more than your money's worth out of it easily. Um, negatives. What are the negatives? Well, of course this isn't hundred percent. Those of you who are like, oh, I only buy tricks if it's gonna work 100% of the time. It's not, this is not 100%, okay, it's not 100%, but you're gonna get close, you're gonna get super close. Pete's gonna show you how to bring that person and get them so, so close. Plus, it's gonna give you an edge. This is gonna give you an edge in all of your magic, okay? This is gonna give you an edge over 90% of the people out there in the world. It's gonna open your eyes and just give you tools to help you be more aware of what's going on in your performances. Second, uh, another negative is it's massive. Oh my gosh, five and a half hours, it's massive. It is massive. It's gonna take you a long time to get through it. It's gonna get, take you a long time to get from one trick to the next. And there, like I said, there's not a lot of structure. There's not a lot of structure. So it is a lot of listening. It is a lot of paying attention. It is a lot of like, um, you know, sh sifting through stuff. And I, I realize some of you, you might not like that. You, you, you might want, you know, you want fast tutorials and you want fast results. This is uh, patience. This is patient magic. This is patient teaching. And I think if you, if you have patience, um, it's worth it for you. It's worth it. Plus, like I was saying, it's a reference tool. You're going to go back to it again and again and again. Mind games, Peter Turner, Mark Lemon, illusionist.com. I have been, I've been rambling on for 15 minutes, rambling on for 15 minutes, but hey, it, it's a, it's a big project and there's a lot to talk about. So appreciative of this. I was so glad I purchased this. This is a great tool. I will go back to this over and over again, I'm sure. And, and I will use this in con connect. Now I'm going to use this when I watch bigger fish, when I watch bigger fish, I'm going to come back to this. When I watch some of other Peter Turner's other stuff, I'm going to come back to this. I feel like this, this, this so, this so uh, accompanies other projects 
that Peter Turner has done. This is like the salt and pepper. This is like the flavor on, on so many other things Peter Turner has done. Um, and, and a great introduction to Mark Lemon, by the way. Um, if you didn't know, I reviewed one of his tricks recently over in the membership section. If you're not a part of the membership section, it's only two bucks a month and you get two extra videos every single week. If you like and appreciate what I do, give me a like, give me a follow, hit that subscribe button. That helps me out a lot and it encourages me to keep on going. That's Mind Games. That's Mind Games. Tomorrow, AAA book test. Like I said, you can pick this up at illusionist.com. Thanks guys. Have a great holiday. Have a Merry Christmas. I will see you guys next time. Bye.